Greetings amigos and welcome to Professional Photography Tips. My name is Josh Cripps and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Previously I've talked about the four elements critical to any great photo. Subject, technique, composition, and light. And this week I wanted to take a look at one of my own favorite photos from Peru to see how I applied those four elements, what works well, and what I'd change if I could. So here's a photo here. It was taken in a place called the Cordillera Y Wash in Peru, which has been called the Himalaya of South America. It's an absolutely gorgeous glaciated mountain range. And I took this photo on my 33rd birthday, uh, which is why I called it 33 Candles. It was this incredible light show that I like to think was put on just for me for my birthday. So thank you, Peru, for that wonderful gift. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, the, the four critical elements to any great photo are subject, technique, composition, and light. So let's take a look at each of those as they apply to this image, and I'll show you what I think works well and what I, could, what I would change if I could. So first thing, subject. Okay, this one for me is sort of a gimme. I deliberately traveled to this spot because I love mountains. And for me, mountains are a wonderful subject because of that fact, because I love them. I love their drama, I love their shape, I love the landscapes that they create, the weather patterns that they create. So, I love streams, I love horses. There are a couple in this photo, which I'll zoom into in a bit. Uh, and I just sort of, so for me, the subject was very, very easy here. In fact, this was just outside of our camp on the second night of this 100-mile trek through the Cordillera Y Wash. So the subject was a no-brainer. It was solved. I simply looked around the scene and went, holy crap, look at those amazing mountains. And that was my subject, easy. So let's talk about the other things that maybe you'll find a little more interesting. Technique, and here I'm talking about camera settings, all right? So the big ones, let's, you know, ISO, shutter speed, aperture, and white balance. That's what I'm talking about here. ISO, I chose, let's bring up my camera settings here. All right, so I took this with my D810 at a four, with a 14 millimeter lens, all right? I chose ISO 64 to give me the highest possible image quality. My shutter speed was a 20th of a second, and my aperture was at F16. Now let's talk a little bit about why I might have done those things. So. The ISO, as I said, is just for maximum image quality to give me the least amount of noise and the highest dynamic range. Your camera produces its best dynamic range at lowest base ISO. Now, because I was shooting with a 14 millimeter lens, which is an extremely wide lens to get in this massive panorama from my feet all the way up through to the mountains, I knew that I needed an extremely deep depth of field to get everything in focus. And that's why I chose f16 as opposed to something like f8, where maybe the lens would be a little bit sharper. But because of its extreme field of view, here I'm practically looking straight down. In fact, my tripod legs and my toes are just outside the bottom of the frame. So that's why I chose f16 to get from here in focus all the way up through to the mountains here in the background. As you can see, they're nice and sharply in focus as well. Now, because the, it, it, normally in any situation where you've got movement in your photo, you want to be thinking about your shutter speed. However, in this situation, this stream was flowing so sluggishly that I wasn't particularly concerned with capturing a lot of movement. I would have had to use maybe a five second or a two second shutter to smooth this water out, and it really wouldn't do a whole lot because there's not you know, there's a few ripples that you can see here. Those would kind of just get smoothed out a little bit. For me, it wasn't going to make a big enough aesthetic change to the photo to really want to pursue doing that, partly because for that 14 millimeter lens, it has a bulbous front element, so I can't put any filters on there. So I'm sort of stuck with the lighting conditions that I've got. Now, there are some camera tricks that you can use to get around that, but at the time, I wasn't considering those. So that, that 20th of a second shutter speed I chose it simply because 
at ISO 64 and F16 on my aperture, I wanted to get a good looking histogram. And if I bring up my histogram here, now I need to, let me make those invisible. Okay, so that's what my histogram for the image looks like here. And as you can see, it's got a great range from black, spans the entire dynamic range, all the way up to almost pure white. So basically I was just targeting that good histogram by choosing that shutter speed of a 20th at F16 and ISO 64. Now the last thing that I chose in terms of my technique was my white balance. And as the sun set behind these clouds and lit them up with kind of this nice warm wine colored glow, I specifically chose a warm white balance, cloudy, in order to help bring out those nice warm tones. So let's pop that back up. That's for technique. Okay, now composition. Let's take a look at a couple of different things. First of all, the basics of this composition are two of my favorite things and two of what I think are probably the most important fundamentals in doing a big wide angle composition like this. The first is the rule of thirds. And if I draw a quick grid on my image here, very quick, at roughly the thirds, whoops, there's a third there, and there's a third there. And if we do top to bottom, there's a third, and there's a third. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Ignore that spill over there. So you can see that what I want your eye to land on, this mountain here, is right in that third. In fact, if you if you kind of noticed, I drew that circle around the whole set of those glaciated peaks. The center of them really lands, boom, right there on that third line. So that's a very, very easy thing. I just knocked the, the mountain right there on the third. You'll notice that this spike of this little peak is also on the third here. Now those are the only two things that really correspond to the thirds. There's not a lot going on down here. That's okay because really the placement up there is a critical thing. Now here in terms of the leading lines, right? We've got three main leading lines. You've got the creek itself flowing from the corner, curving over, hitting the center of that creek, hits that third line, curves back over and ends up. So you have this beautiful curve. I love using corners like this that flow across the frame. That helps your eye flow through the entire image to the visual payoff in the background. So there's the, the creek itself, and that's just sort of underscored by the edges of the creek as well. So those are the other two leading lines. And so all of those lines converge to this point back here onto the mountain, making that a very, very effective visual flow through the frame. Your eye flows through the entire frame, taking it from the lower left to the upper right. So you really take in the whole, fr whole frame that way. Now let's take a look at a couple of the other things that are going on here. You get this mountain coming down here from the left, which also serves as visual pull, which mimics the, the angle and the shape of the curve here. Now this mountain also comes in from the upper right there, which mimics the shape of the curve there. So you have this cool symmetry going on with these diagonal elements all pointing to that visual payoff, that big, beautiful mountain there in the background. So that's what really works. That's why I set up the composition this way. There's a couple of other things going on that are more subtle things, but they're worth noting as well. One is that you can see the edge of the creek here matches up with the edge of the mountain over there. And the edge of the creek here, not as nicely, but very closely also matches up with the edge of the mountain over here, creating also this kind of symmetric shape, right? So all of this symmetry, all of these repeating elements really go hand in hand to enhance each other. Okay, so what would I change about this composition if I could? Well, one thing is I'm not wild about how high up this peak is here on the left hand side. You can see that in terms of pure objective size, it's the biggest thing in the frame. It's bigger than those mountains. It sticks up too high for my tastes. Now, thankfully, it is balanced by the symmetry of the creek here across the horizon line here. If it wasn't for that, that I think would be a majorly distracting element. So that's one thing. And how could I fix that? Maybe if I walked up closer, maybe if I was up somewhere up here on the creek, I would be looking more around this mountain. And I could see more of this stuff and this stuff would be a bit larger in the frame as well. 
I don't know, I didn't have time to get up there, but that's certainly something that I would think about doing in the future. Okay, other things I would change about this composition or about this photo if I could. One would be the timing a little bit. If I zoom in real close here, you can see that this horse in the frame, he he's just got his butt to me. And I, I would really rather have, you know, see him edge on so we get the whole, whole horse kind of like that. So maybe if I had been paying more attention, I could have waited another 30 seconds and he would have turned to the right and I could have shot him that way. The other thing, there's a little burrow over here, right here. And he's so close to the edge of the frame that it's a minor distracting element because he's quite dark. So again, maybe if I had waited another 30 seconds or shot 30 seconds earlier, this burrow would have been more in the frame here and maybe the horse would be facing more edge on. So other than those, those three things, the height of that mountain, the placement of the burrow, the, the uh, position of that horse, I actually wouldn't change a whole lot about the composition here. All right, now the final thing is the light. All right, now the light really elevates this photo, just like it elevates any photo to kind of that special place where you look at it, at least I look at it and I go, wow, what a beautiful scene that must have been. So the real key thing to note is when I shot this. I shot it basically at sunset. So the, mount, the, the clouds were quite far down uh, excuse me, the, the sun was far down behind the mountains, shining back up from behind them onto the clouds this way, lighting them up from behind. And that cloud then in turn bounced some of that warm light onto the mountain, giving it this really beautiful kind of ethereal glow. So that's really the key that makes this a more successful image, is what the light is doing, the, the drama, the texture, and the color it gives to the clouds. And to give you an idea, of how quickly and how dramatically the light can affect this photo. Here's an image that I shot as I was scouting for compositions only about 20 minutes before I took that other picture. So this is when the sun, you can see the sun still shining here on the, let me drag that drawing layer up. The sun's still shining on that mountain up here. So it's kind of over here shining on there. The clouds are over the mountains. They're kind of obscuring it. They're, they're not particularly dramatic or colorful. The light here in the foreground is pretty flat and bland. But as I waited, those clouds filled in a little bit up here. They broke up a little bit here. And look at what a massive difference that makes. Essentially the same composition. I made some minor differences, some minor changes just to kind of fine tune it. But it's really that the light, the sun setting behind those mountains and lighting up the clouds that makes all the difference to this photo. And it, you know, in five minutes after I took this photo, this is what's going on. I, this is, here, let me, this is actually a video. So let me play this. And you, can, you can't actually hear it because there's too much wind going on. But what happened is I, I finished that photo and the, oh, here we go. The video's kicking in here. So I finished taking the photo and this thunderstorm rolled in, completely covered up the mountains. And you can see in the uh, frame here, all the hail and rain hitting, hitting the creek here. Uh, there's a little herder and his horse over there, but you can just hear that wind, that blowing. And this happened five minutes after I took that photo. So it really all comes down to capturing that light at the right time. So there you have it. Those are those four critical elements and how they apply to this photo, what I think works well, and what I think I would change if I had the opportunity to take this photo again. So let me know. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Leave your comments down below and let me know your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. You can also subscribe to this channel and join my newsletter for even more photography tips. You may also find this video helpful. Until next time, have fun and... Happy shooting.